Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a set of two cards featuring some brand new products from the November 2020 release from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm going to be using the Essential Stitched Cover Plate as well as the Essential Nested Chevron Die Set. So I'm going to be creating a Christmas card, but you could definitely change up the color scheme of this and make this a great winter thank you card. I am going to be die cutting a die cut. <laughs> Did you know you could do that? Of course you did. But I just thought I'd show you a way that you can use these dies together to create a really fun pattern. So I'm starting out with my three colors of cardstock. I have kind of this evergreen color, a red, as well as a blush pink. And I am die cutting those with the stitches cover plate. Now this cover plate is going to add a pattern. It also has an outer edge that will cut your cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And since my cardstock is already um, kind of that same width, I went ahead and just held it in place so that I could be sure that my pattern was on there straight. And once I have all of my three colors die cut using that stitches cover plate, I am going to then die cut it using the nested chevron die. And this is going to give me all of these chevron pieces and they're going to have kind of that sweater pattern in them. I kind of, my inspiration for this, and though this card is not ugly, <laughs> My inspiration was kind of an ugly sweater. That's kind of what I was uh, thinking of when I came up with this idea in my head. So I'm die cutting all three of these stitched die cuts with the nested chevron. And just to keep the groupings in order and kind of all of the colors together, I'm using some post-it tape just to pick them up. You could also use some press and seal or some washi tape or some purple tape, whatever you have on hand. I This was just a little thicker, and so, I don't know, I just grabbed it. <laughs> now, after I die cut the red, the pink, and the green, I'm also going to die cut this nested chevron die from some white cardstock as well. And that's going to just serve as some placeholders for me. So I'm going to start with this third thick piece here, and this is a tip I picked up from Leah Lawson watching the Pink Fresh Studio live the other day. And this third chevron or this third kind of thick piece fits right up into the corner of your A2 size card. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White that's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm starting with this piece because I can just nestle it up into the corner, adhere it down, and then I have my starting point to build my pattern. Now the white portions, you could definitely adhere down, but I'm actually just using them to hold my place as I put the ne next color in. So my next color is going to be red and I'm gonna work up to the top and then I'm gonna work from that green chevron down. This is just the way that made sense to me. And I'm using some tape runner adhesive to adhere all of these pieces onto this Nina Solar White A2 size card front. So you can see I'm holding the white piece in place. There's no adhesive on the back of it and just pushing that red piece right up next to it so that it kind of nestles in there and I know exactly how far apart these should be spaced because I'm using that white die cut. Now, if you wanted to eyeball this, you definitely could. Or once you're done with the white pieces, you're gonna see me remove them at the end. You could definitely ink blend those and use them for another card. So this nested chevron die creates these thicker pieces, which you're seeing me place onto this cardstock. Those are the colored pieces of cardstock. And the thinner pieces are the white pieces. And I'm just using those, like I said, to hold my place. So between each of these colored cardstocks, there is a thin piece of white cardstock. You can see me placing these smaller pieces here at the bottom corners. And that, like I said, it just makes building this pattern easier for me. Now, another way you could do this is you could kind of press or deboss this die into your card front and use that as a guide as well. So instead of die cutting the white cardstock, you would deboss using the cover plate die or this nested chevron die into your card front. And that would help you know where to place your die cut pieces as well. So you can see now I have my pattern built and I'm removing those white pieces and I have a beautiful nested chevron card front.
Now I thought it would be fun to add a little more stitching around the edge, so I'm using the stitched rectangle die to die cut this A2 size card panel. And this is going to make my overall panel just slightly smaller than an A2 size card, and it's going to give me those basic stitches around the outside. Now when I started playing this with this, I decided I wanted it actually smaller. So I took the next size down in the stitched rectangle die. And this is when I realized I now have two fabulous pieces that I can use on a card. So I'm gonna make a two for today, even though that wasn't in my original plan. Now I have the Be Mary sentiment. I've die cut it from some glitter cardstock, and I've die cut the outline from some vellum. This is from the classic holiday word die set from Pink Fresh Studio. And I'm just adding a little bit of liquid adhesive to the back of those glitter die cuts and placing them onto the vellum shadow piece. And I brought in that black cardstock just so you could kind of see what I was doing. Now, as I started playing with this a little bit more, I decided that I actually wanted these to be two separate words. So I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim them apart. I had to clean up a little bit with my scissors to kind of smooth out the edges, but this worked really well. And then I took some foam adhesive and placed it on the back of my die cut. And I die cut these little tail pieces. These are from the Artistic Bow die set from Pink Fresh Studio. And I'm using them just as little banners behind these die cut words. You're gonna see that that adds just a little something to this sentiment grouping. And I'm going to adhere this onto my card front using a little more foam adhesive, kind of at an angle here towards this lower right hand side. And I'm gonna place the B right above it. It does not have the little banner behind it. I kind of started out with the banner behind it and decided I liked it better just on its own. And I'll give you a little tip here. Because I am placing the foam adhesive on the white background cardstock and the foam adhesive is white, you can't see that foam adhesive through, you can see the foam adhesive through the vellum, but it is very much disguised by the fact that it is white on white. So if you're ever attaching vellum to white cardstock, go ahead and use some foam adhesive. You won't be able to tell it's there at all. Now I have my sentiment placed onto my card front and I decided it needed just one more little element. So I'm using this Merry Little Christmas stamp set and I'm stamping just part of it in some Copic friendly black ink and I've used some Copic markers to color in these holly leaves and berries and I am fussy cutting these with my scissors. And then I'm just gonna add this right above that little banner that I've created there using my sentiment die as well as those artistic bow dies. And I'm using some foam adhesive just to place those on there. And I'm gonna finish this off by adding some of these red crystals from Pink Fresh Studio. And I'm just using a little glue tube to adhere those on. And I've kind of sprinkled them throughout the front of the card. I finished the card off by adding the card front onto an A2 size card base using some fun foam behind it. And that finishes off my first card for today. And I absolutely love the pattern that is on these chevron pieces that we created using that stitches die. Now for my second card, I'm gonna create a shaker card and use that frame that I got as a bonus by die cutting my piece into a smaller piece. So I'm starting out with the sentiment portion of this Merry Little Christmas stamp set and I am partially inking pieces of this. So I just inked up the top two lines that say have yourself in some black ink. And I am using post-it tape to mask off areas of this sentiment so that I could have a multicolored stamp sentiment. And this will be behind my shaker window. So this is going to be on the base of my card. So you can see I before I stamp, I'm going to remove that post-it tape. And that allows me to stamp that word little in black ink. Now I'm gonna clean the entire stamp. I'm gonna leave the stamp in place and then I'm gonna mask off the have yourself and the little and I'm going to just stamp the A Mary <laughs> in ballet slipper. I had to think about that for just a second. I'm like, what words are left? Um, so I'm just inking that up with the post-it tape in place and once I have that inked up, I will remove the post-it tape and stamp that onto my card front and it was a little bit light, and so I decided to go ahead and replace the post-it tape once again, 
ink it up in the ballet slipper ink just a little bit to add a little more intensity to this ink. I'm going to remove those pieces of post-it tape. You don't want to stamp while those are still on your stamp and then stamp that again. And finally, I can use a piece of post-it tape to mask off above the word Christmas. And I am going to stamp this in candy apple ink from Pink Fresh Studio onto my card base. So you're seeing me build up this multicolored sentiment. It is such a fun effect. And then I decided I did want all of these kind of holiday images surrounding that sentiment. So I went ahead and placed the outer part of this stamp onto my Misty stamping tool. And I masked off the very outer edge of this card just so that it would not, none of this image would show outside of the frame that I created earlier. And I'm going to ink up this stamp in some Misty Coast ink from Pink Fresh Studio. And then I'm going to stamp that. And that's going to nestle right around my sentiment there. And it's going to add some fun holiday imagery in the background of my shaker area. So once I have that stamped, I can remove it from my Misty. I will remove the post-it tape. And then I have this really cool card base. Now this would be fun on its own to kind of do some no line watercoloring, but I have this very cool frame. So I'm gonna create a shaker out of it and that's gonna serve as the backdrop for my shaker area. So I flipped my frame over and I'm adding a little bit of liquid adhesive along the back of the frame. And then I'm adding a piece of acetate that I've cut down to size right on the back of my frame. And then I can go ahead and start building up the walls of my shaker area by adding a double layer of foam adhesive right around the back of that frame. Now, before I add this frame onto my card with all of the shaker bits inside, I'm gonna take a powder tool and just go around the inner edges of this foam tape to try to prevent some of these shaker bits from sticking to the side of that foam adhesive because that foam adhesive can be a little sticky around the edges. So if you treat it with a powder tool first, that can help prevent some of those shaker bits from getting stuck in that foam adhesive and help them to kind of shake more freely inside the card. So you can see I've just added my shiny sparkly shaker bits onto the center of my card base here. Then I'm removing the backer from the foam adhesive. I'm positioning it onto my card and adhering it down. And that finishes off my second card today featuring my ugly sweater inspired idea. <laughs> and like I said, these really aren't ugly Christmas sweaters at all. They're beautiful Christmas cards. And I absolutely love the sparkle on these. I think they're so much fun. And they were very easy to create. This is something that you could... Definitely make a few of these at a time because you will have all of those leftover chevron pieces. You can change up your pattern and create a few cards at once. So as always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. I'm so glad you stopped by and watched today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel here so you won't miss any of our paper crafting, card making, and scrapbooking video tutorials here. We have some great inspiration for you. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.